everyone, I'm Holly and I am the maker here at Missouri River Soap. And today I'm going to make a batch of Merry Cranberry. It's just a wonderful holiday blend of cranberries and citrus and warm woods. And it's a favorite year after year. It's just about perfect because we're getting our first snow of the season up here in the mountains of Montana. And it just, what a, what a great day to make my first holiday soap. You can find me and my products, which, you know, we have to build up some stock, but you can find me at moriversoap.com. You can find me on Instagram at Mo River Soap. My personal there is Holly Bear MT, and on Facebook I'm Missouri River Soap. So I'm going to get all my gear on for safety, and I'll meet you back here in just a split second to make some soap. So this batch starts off very similar to Figgy Cream, and I am going to go ahead and put in my mica, and this is just a blend of trial by fire it's a pigment and um, rose pink from nurture soap supplies so i'm going to carefully kind of submerge that so i don't have a lot of powder tap out the air bubbles and then i'm going to get that blended in That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and add in the coconut milk. I don't need much, it's just a teeny tiny batch here. And then I'm going to put in the lye solution. Put a little bit of lilac in there because it did cool off pretty quickly. But since it's a fresh batch of solution, that can go right in and it will blend right into it. And it's just a reaction with, I have to remember what the what it is. Um, I think it's just a reaction with the carbon dioxide in the air, but I will add a note. trace already. Going to add in the fragrance oil. Smells amazing. Now I want this to be thick enough that it will, whoa, I made a mess, solidify rather quickly, but thin enough that it's going to spread out well and I can get the bowl, the uh, pitcher scraped out prior to it getting too thick because I just want a straight layer just like I do on figgy cream. And I'm not going to move my mold because I do have it leveled. All right, I think we're, we're doing pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour. Oh, it's so pretty. That is pretty. I've been so excited to make this soap. It is my favorite just year after year after year. I think I poured it just, just the right time. So I'm just gonna give it a little shimmy, a little shake, and a little smack. And that just helps to break up the air bubbles. All right, I'm gonna clean up this mess and get prepared for the main portion. Okay, so for this main batch, I know you can't see in the pot, but I'm just going to get it mixed up and then we're going to be um, pouring it out for the most part. So I'm going to put in the coconut milk And I'm going to blend that in. I'm 
Now for the lye solution. Again, it has some of the lilac, but that's just not anything that we worry about at this stage. It just blends in and accomplishes the same thing. If this was a couple of days old or something, and those, uh, the lilac, as it's called, if that was crunchy, I would probably strain that out. I've weighed it before, and it's pretty much inconsequential. Just such a tiny amount. And we're just gonna go ahead and get this blended up. Back in Missouri, I had my camera um, mounted from the ceiling. And so I could get better overhead shots, but I'm just, I'm just working it out right now. I don't want it to come to a full trace. So I'm going to add in my fragrance oil and poor Walmart here. They, they, they tried, I tried to order two cup, the two cups worth and they were sold out. So I switched to get a, a couple of these and they only had one and they tried to substitute it with the huge batter bowl and I was like, please, no, I do not need that. I do not like that huge glass batter bowl. I have one of those somewhere. In fact, I probably just plain got rid of it to Goodwill before we left. It's just too big. Okay, all of these are going to be blended even more. So I'm gonna split some off for a couple of different colors and then I'm going to add some titanium dioxide into this part. So that's what I was doing. I was getting that out so that I could then scrape with this one. Just give everybody whoa, a nice blend. Yes, we are we're in a good position here to just pour and work with colors. I don't need a lot, so I'm just going to pour out a small amount. Let's see, that went to point 0.75 liter. It doesn't take much. I'm doing an in the pot swirl. I guess I haven't mentioned that. And it really doesn't take a whole lot to accomplish that. Okay, so I have some gold. This is just some gold mica from Nurture Soap Supplies. I'm just gonna put in a portion and let's see how it looks. And then again, I have my, you know, reddish pink mixture. Let's see how that goes. We don't want them to be too strong. Mm. Yes, I think that's quite beautiful. Quite nice. Holy moly. That one really packed a punch in there. No, I did not use very much. Well, I don't need to scrape that. Then into this one, I have some titanium dioxide mixed up with some water. Just trying to make sure I have it well blended. We'll see, I don't want to use it all probably, but we shall see. So I'm gonna start at the titanium dioxide. Oh, God. 
Oh golly. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in because I do like a little brighter white on this one. And this is kind of yellowy creamy right now, but it will lighten up. I try not to scrape the bottom too much, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. I am making soap here. All right, so we're gonna go in to the gold. the red I did want to do just a little bit more because um, the trial by fire and, and just some micas in general don't like to um, blend in super duper well okay this is this is quite nice it's still fairly thin this one is quite nice though a smidgen thicker that's pretty good that one's not that's not too thick and then get this one kind of all stirred up some of that you know uncolored gets on the edge from the pouring so really need to get that blended in so in this case, because it's a swirl, it's not going to be that noticeable. Okay. So this one is getting quite a bit thicker. Now here's the thing. When you're doing it in the pot swirl, we don't want it to be too incredibly thin. If it's too thin, it can really kind of muddy up too much when we pour. So let's see. I'm going to put in the gold. Try to go up high so it sinks clear to the bottom and then come low. And I'm gonna scrape it all in. Although, a few, a few swirls on the top wouldn't hurt anything. I think I'll leave that as mostly the cranberry color on the top. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put the gold in. And now with the red, prefer just to kind of have this accent red instead of just having a red bar of soap. So I'm just going to save this teeny tiny bit here at the bottom and I can use that as a drizzle if it still wants to drizzle at the time. So I know you can't see this a whole lot. That's kind of an unfortunate scenario. So what I'm going to do is going to take my spoon in and I'm just gonna kind of come around. It is actually getting fairly thick. I kind of like to break up some of that color that sits on the top so it doesn't just like all go in and a plop. So let me see. I pour, <laughs> I have to remember which arm I pour from. All right. So we are gonna, just gonna go ahead and, well, let's kind of pull it back a little bit. Just gonna go ahead and Get this flooded on. I think you guys can see. Yep. Oh yeah. That's pretty. <laughs> Beautiful. up some of that color. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, it looks very nice down in there. Okay, I'm gonna do, kind of out of breath a little bit. I couldn't see where I was going, so I was, and I was like stretching clear away from me. 
Oh, that's beautiful. I'm gonna smack it down. At least I have my own workshop now and I'm not in the workspace above my house back in Missouri. Everybody's like, I thought you were tearing the house down. Nope, just making soap. Oh, this turned out perfect on the bottom. So, hmm, I kinda can't reach, can't kinda like, uh, what am I trying to say? I can't bend it uh, forward too much, so I guess I'll just kinda scoop it on. All right, surely I could still pour this a little bit. Let's, let's see. A little bit. Just a little bit. And just a little bit more color on the top because we don't have a lot going on here at the moment. I think this may be a little bit different because I do put the cranberry seeds on the top and I'm still planning on doing that today as well, but anyway. It'll be a little different looking than other years, I think. I'll have to go back and see how I've made this one. Whoa, made this one through the years. I can't decide if this reminds me of like candy canes or blood splatter. <laughs> I like it though, either way. Very beautiful. Just kind of cleaning off the edges just a little bit here. So I'm just going to just kind of texture the top like I do figgy cream. It's kind of weird that my two videos are fairly similar, but it is what it is. I'm making the stuff as I need to get it made. The gold actually would have looked really pretty on the top here. What was I thinking? Still pretty. Oh, I can't wait to cut into this one. It's gonna be so much fun. I don't think I mentioned it, but I soap at room temperature. So I got my lime mixed up, which gets very hot, and I brought it back down to, temp to room temp. And the same with my oils. I melt my coconut oil and my cocoa butter and then I add in all the other oils which brings the temperature down but then I let them just sit for a while so that they get to a nice temp. So um, the room temperature lets me work a little bit longer, gives me a little bit more time but then I do still let it come back to a gel and everything. All right my, my glove is whoa I need to get prepare my glove to contain some cranberry seeds here. You don't need many, but just enough to give it a little hint of what's going on. It's just very festive. I love them. I get my cranberry seeds at Brambleberry. It's one of them that one of those things they've carried for a lot of years, and I just love them. Just one of my favorite things ever. That's pretty good. I mean, we're in a position where some of the bars would not have any cranberry seeds, so I have to think of it in that manner as well. Look at them. Aren't they so cute? What it is is really coming down out there. Feels like Christmas. It's like, dude, you're getting a little of yourself out there weather-wise. Still fall. It's so funny how we think about Thanksgiving as kind of being a fall holiday, but you know, it's really not. It is really not. There's not going to be, even in Missouri, there's not going to be any pretty leaves or any of that. Pumpkins, nobody's selling pumpkins anymore hardly by Thanksgiving. And if you buy them early, they're kind of goners. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this shimmer gold. And I do 
Mystic. Mystic Gold Enviro. Oops, kind of did a little spillage there. It's Enviro Glitter from Nurture Soap. It's pretty much my favorite glitter to use on the soaps. So nice. Oh, do you see it though? It's snowing inside too. All right. Okay, I think that looks really good. I do not think I will continue on with this one at all. It is done. I guess I did use to zoom in and give you guys a better look, didn't I? Wowza. All right, so I'm going to let this, you know, do its thing. I'm gonna spray it with 99% uh, alcohol and that's gonna help to prevent the ash. I'm going to invert a tray over it. I know it's gonna gel fine. It's warm enough in here. The wood is an insulator. It's just gonna do its thing. So I will probably unmold it in a cut the next couple of days. I'm usually not in a huge hurry. I usually take a day to wash dishes and work on the first part of the video, etc. So that's what we're gonna do for now. We're just gonna let it rest. I think I will pop the camera off and we'll go look outside for just a little bit. Okay, I'll see you for the cutting. It is almost two days after I made this and it's actually still snowing. It's quite beautiful outside. And uh, we're kind of coming at you with a do as I say, not as I do sitch because I uh, had quite a bit of condensation on from the plastic trays. When it gelled, it really heats and evaporates and the condensation dripped and kind of built right there and it's a little bit ugly when I, um, Split a loaf, I will come closer for you. So, I mean, you could probably see it. Let me, well, where, where are we going? Right in here, you see that? Kind of looks a little, a wee bit wonky, but it looks so, so pretty otherwise. And so, this paper's probably gonna try to take off on me again. You move back. It's a little heavy. Okay. It turned out so pretty though. I am so happy to be making soap again. I literally lay in bed and think about how I made soap and how fun it was and just how truly spectacular it is. I'm going to slice a little bit off the edge. And I'm probably not going to show the splitting all the time. Oh, that's pretty. And look how that color turned out. I am so pleased. The base is a hint lighter than the accent color. But I am cool with that. That is A-OK. -okay. And so... For the sides, it's looking a little bit on the stripey side, but it's going to be fun to see the inside. Cutting it at a little different angle, because I did pour it, as you remember, that way as well, so. Okay. And the cranberry seeds are going to probably drag it just a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. I think I did all right. I feel like I, like I veered just a smidgen, but we'll see. So you're gonna be looking at this spot right in here when I lift this up. Look at that swirl, <laughs> isn't that so cool? Oh, good stuff. I do love the soap I'm making. So I am going to, make a little confession to you. 
I've been buying commercial soap. I know, I know. I should be supporting other makers. I tend to be super picky and I procrastinate. And so I, I have used some handmade soaps from other makers. I truly have during this whole, what am I doing? I feel so confuddled here. So I have been using some, but for the most part, I've just been buying um, some at, at Costco. I finally took a moment to read the ingredients. Oh my gosh, I was like, this is horrible. And even at Walmart, I was like, let's look up and see what they have for like unscented. And their unscented soap was just made with junk. And what I was getting at is last night, um, I saw the box. <laughs> it's like made with 5% shea butter. And I was like, wow, would you like an award or something? Because that's nothing in the handmade world. Butters are a little bit more in use. Anyway, the ingredients just had all sorts of stuff. I didn't know what half of it was, so I was not amused. That being said, I completely understand how the price point of handmade soap is sometimes unattainable. And I have been trying to figure out what I could do to provide quality soap, you know, not just start filling it up with fillers, and yet still have, um, you know, a good, a good quality handmade soap not filled with junk. Unfortunately, that's kind of hard to do for the smaller maker who's not buying an incredible bulk and just the status of the ingredients that we use. We use, you know, olive oil, coconut oil. Coconut oil is one of those little bit less expensive oils, but not inexpensive. Um, you know, castor and we put in cocoa butter and shea butter and mango butters. Not me personally, I don't do the mango and the shea really, but um, just in general, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. Just in general, handcrafted soap is usually just jam packed full of goodness. And that's why we all love it so much, but it does raise the price point. So there you have it. Okay, so here is that loaf. It's pretty much on this loaf only, so I'll just cut around that and either use it for ourselves or cut the tops off and use it as samples. It shouldn't be too many bars, but I also did just realize I don't have my microphone on, so we're probably gonna have a little bit of weird soundness for a minute. Okay, so I have the microphone on now, and let's just go ahead and cut into the wonky loaf. We'll just see what that looks like see if it got extra hot in that spot but i'm pretty sure it was just i used the plastic tray and it con condensed and it just like came in and dripped down so i'm gonna have to get some cardboard out now an option would be since i have the cranberry seeds to put it over on this side so that if it does pull the cranberry seeds through it'll just do it right there on the tippy top instead of pulling it through the entire goodness gracious through the entire oh that's beautiful look at it that's good stuff right there <laughs> that's good stuff nice nice so let's see what this one looks like Oh yeah, totally cool. It's just that, I'll come around. Totally cool. It just the top has that, has that weirdness. So you can see a little bit of the layer there. And then when I come around, you can see a little there. It's almost like, it's not translucent, but it kind of gives you that vibe. So I can just use it for my own self, or like I said, just, I'll just cut the tops off and, and, uh, make it, I don't know if I should be going this way or not. Anyway, or I can just cut the tops off and all will be well. So, 
It looks like I need to start heating up the water for my titanium dioxide. I do have just a few speckles. It's not a big deal. It's not serious. But cosmetically, appearance-wise, I think I would like to remedy that. I could, I do have a little, if I climbed up in my loft, I do have a little pot that I could start heating up some water. I also need to find my little mini blender because that always helps too, using a, using something to help blend that up. Oh my goodness. And that gold, it's a shimmer gold. And so it's shimmering just a little bit. I love it. I love it when a plane comes together. So, continuing the saga of do as I say, not as I do. So right after this batch the other day, I also made um, cream of cacao. And as an unscented soap does, it took forever to come to a, a just a trace and get nice and thick. And I'm sitting there just, you know, I'm sitting there putzing on my phone and waiting and waiting and waiting for it to finally come to a thick enough trace. And it did. Um, you know, good enough to pour and everything. Totally fine to pour at that thinness. Not a lick of trouble. But the one thing I did not remember is you pour it too thin and you spray it with alcohol, it creates little dimples <laughs> in the surface. So now that one has a weird texture. You know, listen, I'm sharing this with you because this is the stuff that happens to soap makers, unless you're perfect, in which I guess I bow down to you. You know, we're not perfect, and I'm coming back from a break. I'm doing everything well and safely, but there's some cosmetic things that, you know, I'm having to remember. And so, yeah, you know, we're not perfect. Not every batch is perfect, and I just choose to show when things go awry, instead of kind of hiding it, really. I mean, you don't have to show it if you don't want to. Why not just show your best work? That's totally cool. But you know, stuff happens, so I know that a lot of you find these videos to be very helpful, not just entertainment, so I'm just gonna share it with you. I'm gonna share the sitch. So I am just going to continue cutting these soaps and then I will get them on the tray to cure. And our humidity is so much lower here in Montana, so I suspect that these are going to just dry out so much better. Not dry out, but you know, evaporate the excess moisture much better than in Missouri. So I'm pretty excited about that. So yeah, I think, I think we're gonna be, oh wait, I forgot to turn it. Ha, huh, oops. You know what, it's not doing anything. So <laughs> we'll roll with it. We'll just keep doing it this way. I did not have so many cranberry seeds on there that it was just a lot to grab onto. So that's part of it. So I think this makes 68 bars. I'd have to completely count. Four loaves, 17 bars. So, yeah. 17, 17 is 34. 34 times two is 68, correct? I hope so, otherwise I just made a weirdness of myself. Oh, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. I'm really, really happy. I really don't need to do it like this because I'm fixing to put this all on the tray. I have to do it. I like 
them to be lined up nearly perfectly at all times. Oops. So I clean off these wires, otherwise this gunk will like settle in on the top. And the top is a section that I really don't want the uh, little soap, I want to call it a soap goober, there's nothing wrong with it, but um, you know the little squishy bits of soap that come off, they will uh, attach themselves to the top of the next bar and they're just too nice for that. This one has mostly gold in it. So here we have the Mary Cranberry soap. Gosh, it's just looking so beautiful outside. I might have to go out and give you a, just a little peek of what it looks like. Okay, so I am just going to work on getting these on the tray. I will put them on the curing rack where they will stay for four plus weeks. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.